Hi, this is Cindy Blair from the Alexandria Museum of Art. Welcome to Amway's Art Together Tuesday. This Tuesday we're going to be doing an abstract painting project inspired by the work of Margaret Evangeline, one of the artists in our permanent collection. Margaret grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and many of the motifs in her work are influenced by sh the struggles growing up female in the South, as well as her Cajun heritage. The camellia found in so many of her paintings, including Ceremony, the painting in our collection at the Alexandria Museum of Art, is a motif that she goes back to repeatedly. For her, she says, the camellia contains of the silent intensity of a live hand grenade. And she says, because it unfurls from the center like an explosion. So this is a very powerful symbol for her. She does a lot of layering in her work. Her colors are tied to emotions for her and, and she uses of layering painting on top of painting. And we're gonna be experimenting with that today. Today we're actually going to, just to let you know, just to prepare you emotionally, you're gonna do an entire painting in one layer and then you're gonna layer another painting over that. So just prepare yourself for that, but it's gonna be fun. We're gonna start with a mindful doodle. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute but get ready. Um, I was so excited to do this because, and I was a little nervous too, because honestly, this is not how I work. I'm a sculptor and um, I have painted before. I started out as a painter, but this was not the kind of painting I did. I don't do a lot of abstract painting. So this was very new for me too. Um, but keep an open mind, go into it with an open heart, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Get ready. For today's project, you'll need a pencil, and something to draw and paint on. I'm using a canvas board here. If you do not have um, painting materials, a lot of this project and some of the things I'm talking about, can, you could use um, collage, you could use, um, we, could, we talk a little bit about layering, so collage would be great. You could use you know, markers or watercolor, whatever you have, some of these things will that I'm, some of the things we're gonna do will actually work with those mediums as well. But I'm gonna be using acrylic paint and um, I'm going to have a black and a white. I think what I have here is a Mars black and a titanium. And um, those are great. Titanium's a little bit more um, opaque than like a zinc. So um, that's what I'm gonna use. Um, I've also got a Dioxazine, dioxine purple and a primary blue and a hooker's green. So I'm gonna use those three. I really love um, these three colors together. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. And then I might just might be doing some experimenting with adding you know different colors. So I might use this primary yellow or um, primary red. Um, again, if you don't have acrylic paint um, and you want to get acrylic paints, I have had pretty good luck lately with Amazon ordering, and um, you know I think that Michaels is still in, in still doing um, orders as well. So okay, so we're going to start with a uh, mindfulness drawing practice that I got from John Simon, and um, if you look back at uh, some of our AMOA Art Therapy Thursdays. Um, I do, um, I lead a sort of mindfulness drawing um, session, so you might want to go look at that. But basically what you're going to do is get yourself very relaxed, take some deep breaths, and just sort of get your hands really relaxed, your body, just sort of let go of any tension you might have. I'm actually going to set a little one minute timer, and I'm just going to let my hand move across the surface of the canvas. There's no right or wrong answers. I'm just allowing my hand to move. And whatever shapes are happening, just sort of relax. Moving all over the canvas.
Okay, so I have laid down some shapes here and I'm gonna just let that be my springboard and I'm gonna move from there. Um, I chose three colors today. Well, I chose more than three colors, but um, the base of my painting are these three colors. And um, the reason I chose green, violet, and blue is because those colors to me are very relaxing. Um, if you look at your, a color wheel, they're actually also analogous colors. So, um, and I brought in this yellow because it is a complement to the purple. So if I need an area of interest or an area that I need to pop, then um, I'm gonna use the complement to that violet, which is yellow. And complementary colors, generally, they make each other really pop. So uh, red and green is also a complement that, um, that works really well, that'll make the other pop. Uh, orange and blue, same thing. So just something to keep in mind as you're painting. Um, colors, really important. And I want you to choose colors that um, are gonna make you feel something positive. Um, or, you know, maybe you want to express something. You've got something on your mind that's not positive and you wanna express that. So think about colors that really for you bring up certain emotions or certain feelings. Um, for me, I'm in a place of really needing to chill out. And so um, I'm gonna use these three colors because those are gonna bring that energy for me. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. And I've got some colors laid out on a palette paper. And it's basically just wax paper. Whatever you wanna use um, for a palette is fine. I, um, I've used uh, old dishes before. Whatever you have is okay. All right, I'm gonna start with some green. And I'm just gonna get, get that laid out in the background. And you know, you've got this doodle in the background, you can alter it at any time. In fact, we, I'm gonna actually, I think, since we're using um, Margaret Evangeline as a inspiration, I think I might do some layering of different shapes over this design. So we'll see where we go. Um, you know, this is the kind of painting practice where it's not that you're not thinking, but you know, you can be kind of relaxed. You don't have to worry about quote unquote making a mistake. Just kind of let it all flow. The great thing about acrylic paint is that, you know, you can make corrections, um, you know, pretty easily. It covers, certain colors cover better than others for sure. Okay, so I am going to now go back into it with my yellow. Sort of um, at this point working light to dark after I've put my little background in there. And I'm just gonna start painting in some shapes. Now, if you are working um, in collage, if that was what was available to you, you just wanna think about um, the, how you're gonna layer your colors next to each other. And because this process really is about layering, so collage is not a bad option for this. Right now, I'm just laying down a first layer of color.
So, now, my painting is dry. I'm going to run my hand over it. Nothing. Okay, so let's think about that Margaret of Angelin piece ceremony. So, if you notice, she's got the camellia shapes, which is a huge symbol for her. Um, and that is layered on top. Those are laid around the painting. And you can notice that underneath that is another painting. So often in these camellia images, she has, um, they are painted on top of another painting. And this is gonna be our underneath painting. And since we are using her as inspiration today, we are going to paint another image on top of that. Now, this requires some bravery because you just painted this beautiful painting. And maybe you're thinking, I don't want to paint on top of it. Okay, but just trust me. Um, if it doesn't work out, you can paint over the whole thing. So, but, but I think it's gonna be okay. So I am gonna take um, one of my smaller brushes and I'm gonna think about some shapes that I might want to paint on top. Um, I really like this spiral. So I think that's gonna be, I think I've come up with maybe the spiral in one place and then maybe sort of this sort of floral shape right here, over here, sort of echoing that. So I'm going to use white. You could choose to use a different color. It just really depends on what you have, what you've chosen for your background. But I'm gonna choose white and maybe add a little yellow. So sort of a really warm, creamy, yellowy white. Okay. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna go right here. So you're gonna start with your image that you want to paint. And do sort of a spiral right there. Just kind of, you know, um, I got my, I added a little water to my paint to make it a little bit more fluid. Okay, and over here I'm gonna do this sort of um, flower petals. I really like that shape. That's a shape that um, I really enjoy. And it's kind of offset, you see. Okay. Now my space in between I'm gonna kind of paint over. I'm gonna see what that looks like. I think, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'm gonna let the, um, that image in the back kind of show through a little bit. I'm not sure yet. <clears throat> maybe there'll be places where it peeks through and places where it's um, a little bit more opaque and then maybe I might add more shapes I don't know yet um, in ceremony she she really covers it pretty good and then other times um, there are other paintings where she's used the camellia where you can see the whole thing sort of underneath this is all you know you just you're, you're experimenting you're playing and that's okay. Feels like we're getting somewhere. Um, but I think I want to add even more sort of depth to the top of this. I think I'm going to go in with, let me think about what color I want to use on top of that. What color could I use? 
Let's pull out a little blue and see what happens. Now I'm seeing some shapes underneath that I kind of want to pull, uh, maybe emphasize a little bit. Not all the way, just a little bit. Pull them through, um, they're a little bit ghost-like. I like that spiral. And maybe I, yeah, I wanted to yeah, do a thing that cuts across maybe. Okay. And so it sort of integrates the two a little bit. Pull out some green. So in some places, I'm just sort of extending the image underneath, um, which is given, I think, a little bit of depth. Just going back to that purple, just add in a darker color to sort of give um, the shapes I'm making a little bit more of depth. Because it's, it's the darkest color that I'm using, really, as far as how the paint sort of, um, it's more opaque for sure. That green might be about as dark, but I think it's a little darker. And you can kind of find a way to put your own mark on this thing, make it really yours. And you know, don't be afraid, like maybe mix a little purple and blue together. You know, you can mix your colors a little bit and see what happens. And every now and then, you know, just stop and look at it a little bit. Think about how you feel about it. Is there anything you need to change? Is there anything that needs to be altered in any way? I'm just noticing that that... Uh, that needs to be a little bit thicker, that paint. So all I've done with these lines is I've extended some of the natural lines that were in the image underneath and just sort of, so now we have some interesting shapes and depth, hopefully, and it's just given us a little bit more um, to look at. And now I'm just sort of going over some of my lines. There are a couple places where I feel like the paint just needs to be a little bit thicker. Um, so so that I feel like I'm getting close to being done, but I want it to look finished. And sometimes, sometimes it's cool for the paint to be thin in some places, but uh, you know, it just needs to look like a choice. And so I am leaving some places a little thinner just because I think it looks nice in that spot. It just takes a little practice and you're like, oh yeah, it needs to be a little bit deeper here. You'll, you'll, you'll know when you see it. And you know, there's no right or wrong answer there. It's just whatever, you know, just go with your gut. So now I am just underlining, I'm just sort of outlining gently in my own, I like, I'm, I'm using a bit of a lighter line than, um, Margaret Evangeline does in her work, but she goes back and a lot of times she'll, in the particular piece we're looking at, she actually used the complementary color to the blue that pops through that orange and she outlines the camellias in that. I think that's a nice touch. So I'm gonna do that. You don't have to, 
to your painting. You don't have to, but I'm gonna do that. And let's see, hold on. I feel like we're almost there. Make it a little darker in some spots. I feel like we're there. Um, I had fun doing that. I actually had fun doing that. So I hope you did too. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm there. That feels, you know, you just want to work to a place where you feel it's complete. Um, every now and again, don't forget to take a step back and see what you've got. Just so, you know, that way sometimes we can get so engrossed that we might actually be finished with something um, and not know it. Or maybe there's a a turn that we need to take that we might miss if we're too engrossed in the work. So occasionally take a step back because sometimes things look a little better than you think they are because you're too involved. So it's important to occasionally take a step back. But um, I really enjoyed that. Um, this is, like I said, this is not something I would normally do. This isn't the way I normally work. But um, it was really fun to be inspired by another artist and take a step back outside of my own practice and create something completely different. So. Um, I really hope you felt the same way. If you did something that you really enjoyed today, I hope you share it with us. Thank you for joining us for today's AMOA Art Together Tuesday. And if you have any feedback, be sure to let us know. We are definitely open to new ideas and stay tuned because speaking of that, we will be announcing a new, um, new ideas very soon. We're wanting to do some interactive AMOA Art Together Tuesday, so stay tuned for more information on that. Um, I really enjoyed working today, um, being inspired by Margaret Evangeline's work. And if you want to learn more about Margaret Evangeline, you can go to margaretevangeline.com. Um, and if you'd like to look at the painting ceremony, it's actually on our website as well as several other works from the collection. So that's themuseum.org and then look under explore and collection and you'll be able to see several works from our permanent collection. All right guys, be safe and I will see you again soon.